We often get asked how we put the logo and other custom etchings on our knives, kind of like this example here. So today, we're going to go behind the process of how we do that so that you have a starting point in case you want to try putting a special finishing touch on your blades. The first step is to get our stencil designed and made. For ours, we first create the design that we want in Photoshop, and then we send that file to a company that can print them on the proper material for us. We like to use a company called TUS Technologies that I'll link in the description below, but there are other options out there. The proper formatting for our stencils is usually 2.5 inches wide by 7.5 inches tall. So now I'm just adjusting that here in the Photoshop new document section. Um, and then you also want a vertical orientation rather than landscape. So that first brings you to this blank slate where you can kind of fork your magic. As long as you leave enough space on the stencil between each design, you can fit quite a bit onto one. So now we're just going to kind of play around a little bit and add a few things and show you how that's done. If you want your design to mainly just be letters, you can click on the little T on the left bar there, which is the text box, and then just type in whatever word you want or initials or some date, um, and then select the font that you like, and then resize as needed. To resize the text, you can either click on one of those little arrows on the top right or top left or any other corner and drag, or you can just change the font size at the top there. It's also really easy to quickly change fonts. If you highlight the text you want, click on this little section here, and then type in or search for the new font that you want. If you want multiple versions of the same thing, you can easily just click on the design, um, hit copy, and hit paste again, and then you can just paste it in a little bit lower. That's nice if you want to do the same design in different sizes like I just did there, or if you just want multiple of the same ones in case one wears out over time. Another option for a nice custom stencil besides words is to put a custom logo of some sort in. So here what we're doing is just dragging in a PNG file that we had from someone else that has sort of a transparent background and then just drag that directly into the file which is super nice and easy and you can resize as you need to. So if you have a logo that you have made for your company or if some customer wants some sort of custom logo that they already have designed, you can just get that file, um, make sure PNG format usually works well, and then drag it in. Now that's all left to do is save it under the file name that we want and then save it as a Photoshop file and then we can hit that and then it's ready for sending to the company for printing. And here's one example of a filled up finished one. One thing that I always recommend doing is to print off a copy of this and then you can actually hold it up to the knives that you're wanting to etch just to make sure that your sizing is all correct. That way you don't accidentally order something that doesn't actually fit the knife that you want to etch. So here's what the stencil looks like once it arrives. We have a bunch of different designs here, and then you can use each one depending on what project is going on. So the first part of etching the logo is going to be degreasing the area that we're going to be putting the logo on, because if you have any oils on that area, then the etch will not be as sharp and bold as we'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and use some rubbing alcohol on a paper towel and just degrease the spine of this blade. These are the main components of the etching setup. So first what we're going to do is get one of these cotton makeup remover pads and then put it onto our Personalizer Plus Etching Machines etching pad. And then what we're going to do is use some electrolyte solution that I'm going to put on the pad, which will help make the logo. Then I have just a little bit of water here that helps keep the stencil onto the blade. So then I have the Personalizer Plus etching machine, and my typical process is going to be starting on an etch cycle, which gives a deep etch, and then once I have that done, I switch it over to the mark, and then that darkens the etch. And I usually just run it on a 5 power setting. So in order to actually do the etching, you're going to take the one clip and clip it onto the metal part of the blade so that the current can flow. And then we're going to take the little bit of water, just do a little dot on there, and then lay the stencil down onto the blade, like that. So then what you want to avoid here is etching it past the end of the stencil because then that will blacken the actual metal here as well instead of just the area that we're wanting to etch. So when you're taking the pad, you want to make sure you avoid moving it over here and just keep it focused primarily on where the actual logo or design is. All 
I always like to do cycles of around three or four seconds, just holding it down on there and then lifting it up because it builds up quite a bit of heat when you're doing the etching and you don't want to burn through the stencil. So on the etch setting, to get the depth, I usually do probably five or six little cycles of around five seconds. Now that we have the depth that we want, let's switch it over to the mark and darken the logo. And then for this, I just do the basic same process, lift after every five seconds or so, and then we can check to make sure that the darkness is good. If you want to check on the progress, it's just important to keep one finger holding down the stencil and just kind of lift the edge a little bit to check on the etch to make sure it's dark enough or deep enough, and then you can usually just put it back down and it should lay back down in the same spot to make it even darker or deeper. And then once you're done, all you have to do is take off the stencil, wipe it dry a little bit, and then just put a little coating of oil on it to make sure that it doesn't rust and that the etching process has stopped and that helps also darken the logo a little bit more. Here are a few more examples of some other custom designs we've done in the past. We've done everything from initials to catchphrases to special dates. The nice thing is there are really a lot of different possibilities that you can do to add some nice customization to your knives. We hope this was helpful for you, and if you decide to give it a shot yourself, make sure to send us a message and show us what you came up with. We'd love to see it. Thanks a lot for watching, and stay sharp.